Let's head over to Google. We'll type in min gw download. We'll go to source forge where I got it from, click download. Once it's finished downloading, we can launch it, install it, Once installed, hit continue. Mark this C compiler and go to File, go to Apply Changes, and hit Apply. This will then install the package. The close box will ungray when it's done downloading. Then you can go ahead and close out of it. You can exit out of this box. Go over to your control panel. Find system. Advanced system settings. Environment variables. Go double click on path. Find the location within your file explorer where you downloaded the MinGW compiler. Or where you installed it, I mean. So mine is here. Go into the binaries folder. Grab the location. Put it into path. Click OK. OK again. OK. Now just to confirm, go to command prompt and type in the following to confirm the version that it's installed correctly. Next we'll go to VS Code on Google to download our version for Windows. When installing VS Code, we'll just agree, hit next, do add to path, the bottom option, then install. We'll go ahead and launch it. Let's head over to the extensions on the left panel. The first one we'll want is C slash C++. Install it. Another one we want to install is Code Runner. Hit install. I'm going to go under File just to make a new folder. I'm going to call it Projects. And I'll make one called C++, or CPP for short. I'll create a new file and call it main.c++. I'll go ahead and install this extension pack since it's recommending it to me. I'll go under Terminal. Once I select that, it creates this tasks.json. This basically has metadata about how the C++ is being compiled. And you can see it creates a new folder and a new file. I'm going to go under Preferences as well just to increase my font size so y'all can see it better. So now let's go ahead and write our first program. We'll go ahead and type in include input output stream. This pretty much is just the basics of what C++ needs in order to run a program. So now we'll do standard console output hello world and standard end line. Return 0. These are just little things that you need to type in for C++ to run a program. But we can see that it doesn't like this and it might be because I just need to restart VS Code because this is the first time that I've set everything up so it probably doesn't register the compiler or the extensions I downloaded or just something's not happy. But let's go ahead and 
run it, we see that G++ is not recognized, but we know it's installed. So we'll close out of VS Code, open it back up, and it looks like it's happy now. So let's go ahead and run this. And we see something else that doesn't like because it wants that double colon. Hello world. Here's our first program. Now let's get started with the tutorial. A variable is a container that stores data and you give it a name. Imagine you have a sock drawer in your closet and you put a piece of tape on it and you write in Sharpie socks. It stores socks. And now the variable is socks and the value inside the variable is the amount of socks or whatever that you choose it to be. So for this example, we're going to do int, which is a type of variable, which stands for integer, like number. We're going to have taco quantity. So how many tacos do we have? We've got 20. So we're, this is our variable, the amount of tacos. And this is the value of our variable. So the next one will go taco rating. We can give some rating to our tacos. Maybe we're selling some tacos or we're buying some tacos. And then a double is a type of int that pretty much has a decimal beside it. So for this, we actually have to change that to a double because if we leave it as int, it's just going to print out six by itself. So we'll just leave that as six. So double taco price. We'll do $1.29 per taco. And then if you want to cerveza with that, maybe it's $2.50. Now we could talk about char, which is character. And we could say this: these are grade A tacos because care rec represents one character. We can use a currency. So character can also represent a character as a symbol. Then we have bool. Bool is a variable type that means true or false. So we can say bool vegan, are our tacos vegan? And I would say false. Are they healthy though? True, even though they're not vegan, our tacos are still healthy. And now we have this thing called standard console output. That's what that stands for. So standard console output, the price. So if I were to run this, oh, it's taco price, taco price. It was gonna give me the price of a taco. And now if I were to do some strings, let's say I wanted to type out like a word, I could say the name of is Jimbo Tacos. And we could do string city, where are the tacos made? They're made in Toronto. Toronto and we can even chain these together so we could do std count name console output because this one by itself it just says name but if we type in hello in the little space then we add a name to this so this kind of like appends this onto the last part and then this is just to create a new line after it. So it says, hello, Jimbo Tacos. And as you can see, the taco price is right here. So maybe we'll add a new line right before hello as well, just to separate it. There you go. So it says, hello, Jimbo Tacos. There's another type of variable called a constant. A constant is a type of variable that you can assign something to that you cannot change it later on. So if I were to write const double, this is showing that we're going to specify a double. That means a number with possibly a decimal point with some numbers after it. And that number is never going to change after I declare it right now. So we could do pi, which is 3.14159. Now, Normally, if we didn't have the constant here, this would be fine. But since it says constant, 
a standard naming convention among all programmers in this language say that we should always use capital letters when declaring constant variables. So I'll use that and now I'll say pi is actually number 20.2 and if I were to do std console output pi so I get an error if I try to change it and it basically just gives me errors saying this is a read only variable we can't change it so you can't even do this it won't even let you do it so now if we run this we can see that pi is pi now if we wanted to calculate the circumference then you just do double radius you put in the circumference so the radius can be whatever number you put it to but the circumference to calculate it you do 2 times pi times the radius and if we do console output we'll do circumference and then we could put in meter meters or whatever unit measurement you want to put in so you hit play and we could see that it is 62 meters and here's with a little space A namespace is basically it provides a solution for preventing name conflicts in large projects and each entity needs a unique name. A namespace allows for identically named entities as long as the namespaces are different. So what does that mean? Let's do int a equals zero and int a equals one. This gives an error. So if I just run it like that, I'm getting an error because I've declared A twice. It doesn't like that. So how do I declare A twice? I can do it before this block. So I'll delete it here and I'll put in namespace one int x So int a equals one. Then I'll do namespace two, where my integer a equals two. And now if we go integer a equals three, and we do standard console output a. So let's print out what a is. So it prints out three. It didn't print out one and it didn't print out two either. So how can we print out one of these down here? Because this by default uses the local version of the entity. So this is the entity in the main block. This is the entity in namespace two block. This is the entity in namespace one block. They're all the same variable name and they're all different entities, but this one's native to this block. So this one's the default one. That's what gets printed out by default. If we want to print out something else, then we do std console output. We go one, a. And the reason why I typed one is because I have number one namespace named up here. So I'm referencing this namespace and I'm using the double colon, which is a scope resolution operator, which references the version of the entity from this namespace. And I'm pulling the A from that namespace. So now if I hit play and run this, now I get one, which is assigned to namespace one. And if I want to get two, I just change this to two and I hit play. Or another way that I can do this is I can cancel this out and I could type in using namespace one 
and then I don't have to have this there at all. Now I could just hit play and it's using the one from namespace one. There's also something you'll see often called using namespace STD. What this means is for this console output, you're always putting this STD in front of it. So now if I'm using namespace STD, you don't have to put in the standard in front of console output. Now I can hit play and it runs it. But the standard namespace has hundreds of entities. So if I go like this, you can see here are all of the options within the standard entity. This list is, it's just huge. So every time you use using namespace as standard, you are loading everything into the code function, making it use way more resources than it needs to. And there, there's going to be a lot of potential conflicts and errors and variable names that you can't use. So if you, if you just want the convenience, though, of not typing in as standard in front of console output, then all you would have to do is using standard console output, or you can type in using standard string. So either one of these work for that. So if we could test this out, I could type in string name Hungarian nerd. If I didn't have this here, so, so as you can see, I'm getting an error for string because I don't have it here. And that's because I have to do using standard string. So now I do console output, hello name. And now that's a cleaner way of writing the code, better to look at it that way, but still using this, you might only want to use this if you're using a string a whole bunch of times in a function to make it worth it. If you're only going to use string one or two times in a function, or under 10 times, you might be better off just typing in the standard followed by the scope resolution operator. And that might be more optimal for your program, or it might not be. Typedef is a reserved keyword used to create an additional name or alias for a data type or a new identifier for an existing type. This helps with readability and reduced typos. So let me show you something I saw in bro code where he used the vector as an example in his lesson. So here's an example of something that's going to be long, obscure, and really complicated, and something that you probably won't understand as a brand new beginner. So here's type def. It's taking this long string and it's turning it into an integer assigned to this name. So if I were to go into integer main, then if I were to run this, I would have to type this out. So this is pretty long. But we can create a type def where you just replace this with this alias that we assign to it. And that's what type def is. Let's talk about arithmetics. We have a sock drawer with 10 socks in it. Now, we can add a sock by doing socks equals sock plus one. Or socks plus, let's just do socks. We do socks equals socks plus one. That's how you add one sock to 10.
and if we want the output we do std standard console output socks so now you see we have 11 socks if we want to add another sock to it there's another way to do it you can do plus equals you can also do socks plus plus so now you can see that we've got 13 socks now what if we want to take socks out then you do socks socks minus one so now we're down to 12 socks we could do socks minus equals one which takes one sock out we could do socks minus minus which takes another sock out so now we're back to 10. we've added three socks we've taken two socks three socks out and now if we want to multiply the socks we could do socks equals socks times two we could do socks times equals two and we could do so now you can see it's 40 because 10 times 2 equals 20 times another 2 is 40. we can divide these the same way we could do socks equals socks divided by 2 which is now going to bring us 20. 40 divided by 2 is 20. we'll do socks equals or socks divided by equals 2. run this again and now we're back to 10 socks we did all that and we only have the same amount of socks that we had this whole time now there's another one called modulo where you can do socks divided by three let's say which is an odd number to d divide by and it's going to divide it by three so 10 divided by three and it's going to give us the odd number out that's left out of the division the result So standard console output, remainder, we'll just comment this out. So 10 divided by 3 is a number, but the number left over from that divider is 1. C++ also natively uses PEDMAS to do calculations, so if you do 4, minus in parenthesis 8 plus 2 times 5 divided by 4 it's going to look at this it'll do 5 or 8 plus 2 first then it's going to do times 5 divided by 4 and then it's going to minus 4 from it so if you were to do 2 plus 4 it's still going to do 8 plus 2 first. If you want it to do 2 plus 4 first, then you're going to gotta put it in these into parentheses. So now it's going to do 2 plus 4, then it's going to do 8 plus 2, then these two, and then finally it's going to do the minus. So what's this number? Oh, okay. So here I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, and I'm going to go all the way down to this equation and just do double backslash. Just gonna comment everything out and leave these two here. So I'll hit play here and we can see this equals minus six. Here's some additional math operators. So we'll create a double A, which equals one. A double B equals two. Double C, we're not gonna give any value to yet. So our first operator is max. So max is going to take a. It's going to compare it to see which number is the maximum out of the two. So two is the biggest number here. One is not. So it's going to print out two. One is called minimum. I'm just going to put them out side by side min takes a and b and it shows you what the minimum number is pow takes the number and brings it up the power so 2 to the power of 3 
So this is saying we can't use standard with this math equation, so we're just going to use pow by itself. So for this, we're going to have to include C math. Now that I can read it, we're going to do 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Next, we have square root. So we can square root the number 5 and assign it to C, which is going to give us 2 point some big number. And there's C, ABS, which gives us the absolute number. So if we do minus 3, it gives us 3. Our next one is round, so it's going to round up to the nearest number, or round down. So here we got D, so we don't have D yet. Let's make a D variable and assign it to, let's say, 4.7. So this math operator is going to take the value of D, round it up to the nearest number, and assign it to C. So round brings a number up to 5, and if I put it to 4.2, it rounds the number down to 4. Ceiling, short, shortened to seal, rounds the number up no matter what it is, so if it's 4.2, it rounds it up to 5. Floor automatically rounds it down, so if I do 4.9, and if I hit play, it rounds it down to 4. And there are hundreds of these that you can find in C++ math documentaries. You just look up C math and look up all of the operators. There are countless of them. Let's talk about type conversion. There's two types of type conversion. We've got implicit, which means automatic. And we've got explicit, which is manual through some operations. So if I were to take a data type like integer and create a variable called shirts, then I create another integer called pants. Now I can create the double equals the close and shirts plus pants. And if I were now to print out standard console output for close, it would print me back 14, which is actually a double data type. So we've converted the two integers into one double.